Hi, I'm Cormac Kinney. I'm the founder of Diamond Standard. There's been a lot of news about diamonds in the uh, in the newspapers lately. Financial Times, Bloomberg, Forbes, they've all published articles in the last two weeks. And right now it's November 13 when I'm recording this. Uh, and coincidentally, the sales of Diamond Standard commodities are up about 500% in the first two weeks of, of November. And so I want to share with you why uh, we've seen this pivot in, in demand, and more importantly, what's happening in the diamond market. And we really believe that now is the time to build a position in uh, diamonds. And I haven't said that for the last year, because diamond prices have been steadily, uh, steadily but slowly declining for the last two years. So first, I want to start with a long-term chart of diamond prices, because I think it's very important to put these prices into context. And in this chart, you'll see this is a history of diamond prices. This is our Diamond Standard Index, which is published by Bloomberg under DIAM Index. And now that we have a commodity, we were able to backtest that for actually 20 years. And that's what this price history shows. And what you'll notice is that diamonds have traded within a relatively tight range, basically from 4,500 to 6,500 over really the last 20 years. You saw a, a giant uh, rise up to about 8,500 during um, the early 2010s when uh, there was a lot of demand for commodities, especially in China. That's when China started buying diamonds in much, much larger quantities, which has continued to grow. But more recently, you saw in uh, 2020 with COVID, diamond prices went up tremendously because basically the mines were closed and people were shopping from home. More recently, in, in fact, for the last uh, 20 months, basically, since February of 2022, diamonds have been falling. They, and they fall in about 40%. And that's really because of uh, two things. One is the uh, loose uh, demand in China because of the extended time they were in the lockups. And when they came out of lockups, they didn't resume that buying because they're in a recession. But more importantly, Russia has been dumping diamonds and uh, Al Ros has been selling as many as they can uh, to fund the war uh, in Ukraine. And so that's driven prices down. Some also from synthetic diamonds uh, has, has somewhat captured a lot of people's attention. Diamond, synthetic diamonds have, have utterly collapsed in price. They're down about 80%. And more and more consumers are realizing those lab-grown diamonds are marked up between five to 10 X by the time when you buy them in a retail store and they're not putting up with that. But the long story short, diamond prices have been relatively flat and you'll notice today, they're basically at that long-term floor, that nominal floor of around 4,200. And what you'll see is in the news that's come out is that the diamond mines have said, we're not gonna sell at these prices they can't replenish diamonds at uh, $4,200 per uh, coin, which is the index price. And so, as you can see from this article in Bloomberg, uh, it's starting to have an impact. For the first time in the last 20 months, diamond prices have ticked up, where for every single week they were falling. Finally, they're starting, they flatlined for a few weeks, and now they've started to tick up the last uh, three periods. So we think that diamonds have hit the floor, and we think a lot of it is because the mines can't sell diamonds at, at these current prices. So De Beers and several of the other mines have canceled their sales till the end, uh, till the end of the year. And also in India, they've partly with the Diwali uh, holiday, they've shut down all diamond processing for an extended period of time. We think that this floor is is real and that the industry can't afford to produce, sell, and, and uh, polish diamonds at really less than the prices they are now. So we think that prices have only one way to go, which is, which is probably up. The other news, and you'll see this in this uh, other article in the Financial Times, is that Europe is, and the US, but Europe is what's being announced here, Europe is actually effectively sanctioning Russian diamonds from being sold in Europe. Up till now, there were sanctions, but there was a loophole. 
which is that if the Russian diamonds were cut in India, they were considered Indian products. And that's the, true in the United States also. But as you can see in this article, the EU has gotten together, passed a resolution that they're going to track them to the source. And so they're banning uh, the sale of uh, Russian diamonds. And we think it'll carry through to the U.S. as well. You, normally, they would have done this through the Kimberley process. And that's you know what the famous blood diamond of yesteryear is all about. But the UN uh, has Russia as a standing voting member, and so they could not pass that resolution in the UN to block Russian diamonds. So the long term uh, is still the same. So we think diamonds have hit the floor. We, we've seen them start to move up. But long term, we believe that diamonds will um, continue to catch up with other precious metals. What I mean by that, as you can see by this chart, investors own at least 15% of platinum, palladium, uh, for example, and silver. And they only own about 1% to 2% of diamonds. We think that uh, as diamonds become financialized through the spot trading that, and financial products like ETFs and futures, that that demand will also allow diamonds to catch up, but it'll also impact prices. If you're not familiar, Diamond Standard produces the world's only regulated diamond commodities. That's these coins right here. Today, the market price, I think, is about 4210. I have to look it up on Bloomberg to find out because we don't set the price. But the breakthrough is that these two coins are equivalent. They contain an optimized set of diamonds uh, that add up to the same carat weight, color, and clarity. And these are produced under regulatory supervision. Diamond Standard does not own any diamonds. We're an agency that buys them for our clients and we charge a 3.5% to produce those. These commodities have unlocked diamonds as an investable asset so that 1.2 trillion of diamonds can finally get into the hands of investors at a market price. And as a, as a spot commodity, you can buy and sell that with, with relatively low friction compared to if you buy a diamond from your jewelry store and try to sell it, you'll take a serious haircut. This chart shows you some of the products that we're planning over uh, the next several years, many of which we already have approvals for things like funds, exchange traded funds, the futures, the options, and a digital commodity currency called carrots, which is where people can use diamonds as the asset to back a digital currency. So we think all of these things together give a long-term positive outlook for diamonds. We think that the floor being established by the diamond mines refusing to sell and the Indian polishers refusing to polish, we think that the EU ban on Russian diamonds is going to choke off 30% uh, of the supply, which is how much Russia supplies. And we think the long-term long demand from investors is uh, likely to impact prices and pull them up. So all that being said, we think that now is an interesting time to start building a position in diamond commodities. If you'd like to learn more, please visit diamondstandard.co. Thanks.